Hey everyone, how's it going? Travis and Susie here from The Wolf Hunters and we've got a reaction video for you. We got this link right here. You can find that link in the description box which is below the video uh, to request your own personal reaction. Um, you can request documentaries, movie scenes, comedy skits, compilation videos, pretty much anything you find on YouTube. Um, music seems to be the biggest one on the channel. Uh, today's video is brought to you by Menno. Menno! And Menno is bringing us, how does Belgium influence the rest of the world? I'm excited for this. Yeah. Uh, I like stuff like this. Menno says, since you decided to branch out from just music reactions to other media, which is relatively new. Yeah. Uh, my patriotic side came out to let you venture into my home and my home. And land. And land Belgium. Oh, I love that idea. Yeah, this is I really cool. love that idea. You know, we've gotten a few things not quite like this, but um, things uh, about uh, Australia. Australia, yeah. Um, and um, so this is really cool that we're getting to like branch out. Yes. Um, this is a great and wonderfully executed thorough explanation of many aspects of Belgium. If this inspires you enough to once in your lifetime visit Belgium, I definitely recommend cities like, I don't know if I'm going to... Brudges, Brudges Brussels, Brussels, Antwerp, or Hesselt. Sorry if we botched that. Let this video be a small window opening up to reveal a lot of what Belgium has to offer. This was such a cool idea. I, I mean, love this yeah, so this much. Yeah, this is awesome. All right. Guys, you know the drill. Hit like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell and feel free to comment below. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, this city is so cool. Today, we explore all things Belgium. A small European country about the size of Maryland, Belgium packs a powerful punch in the global community, especially in luxury items. So what comes from Belgium? I'm glad you asked. In this video, we will learn the following. What highly desirable commodities are major Belgian exports? Are we talking about Brussels sprouts here? What type of world famous food actually comes from Belgium? Hold on, first of all, it's wild just to think the country is the size of Maryland. Yeah. You know? Uh, it's that so, always blows us yeah. away, stuff like that. Yeah, and it always makes sense, but it's so also so blows my mind when you hear about people that know how to speak so many different languages, but it's also because of close proximity that they would know all those different languages. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Like imagine if each state was a different country and different states had oh, different yeah, languages yeah, yeah, and yeah. stuff. Yeah. But um, so far, I am sold on this architecture alone. Did you see oh, it? Oh, yeah. Holy smokes. All right, ready? And not their neighbors, despite its inaccurate name in some parts of the world. What did Belgian children drink at school for lunch in the 1960s and 70s? And why is Brussels nicknamed the capital of Europe? Answers to these questions and so many more will be sprouting out throughout the whole video. Stay tuned to learn all about this fascinating country, starting with its geography. Still for a little bit. Can't you sit still for a little bit. Belgium is located in Western Europe and borders the North Sea as well as the countries the Netherlands, France, Germany, and Luxembourg. The name Belgium dates all the way back to Roman times and is believed to come from the Belgai tribes which lived in the northern part of what was then Gaul. According to the experts, the name has its roots from the Proto-Celtic words Belg and bulk, which means to swell with anger. When Julius Caesar conquered what? their lands, he observed that their language and traditions were quite different from those of the other tribes in Gaul. The Romans described the Belgais as the bravest of all the tribes of Gaul. Huh. Culturally and physically, Belgium is divided into three autonomous regions, Dutch-speaking Flanders in the north, French-speaking Wallonia in the south, and the wow. multilingual Brussels capital region. Adding to the flavor of- So that'll also do it. That'll do it. That'll yeah. do it, you know? <laughs> This small country is the German-speaking community of Belgium. 
Known as the East Cantons and with its own government, it is located on the border with Germany, wow. the Netherlands, and Luxembourg. Flanders makes up less than half of the land in Belgium, but the Flemish make up 60% of the population. What? The French-speaking region of Wallonia has over half of the land of all of Belgium, but only about one-third of the population. That to oversimplify wild. their issues, traditionally there have been tensions between the two due to having separate languages. Adding to the drama, the French-speaking Walloons were richer and more powerful than their neighbors to the north. Early in the marriage, of Belgium and it led to some resentment. It's that began video. to change after World War II when Flanders put its money into innovation which led to the building of Look new businesses, causing the Dutch-speaking Flanders to surpass Wallonia in wealth. Belgium has three main physical regions, the coastal plain in the northwest, the central plateau, and the Ardennes uplands in the southeast. The coastal plain is mainly made up of sand dunes and polders, areas of land close to or below sea level that have been reclaimed from the sea. These lowlands are protected by dikes on the coast and wow. further inland by fields that have been drained with canals. The is central plateau straight? lies further oh, inland that? and is defined by the fertile valley. What's that? See how it's like a... Oh, I can't point on top of it anymore, but... Do you like... Is that a street? Oh, it's definitely a... Uh, like you drive on it? Or is it like only... You would only go... Workers. Yeah, you would only go up there if you were working on it. I would assume that. Oh, that's like terrifying to me and really cool looking at the same time. <laughs> oh my gosh, I hope we get this from more countries. This is oh, such I a great idea. This. Yeah. That have been drained with canals. The central plateau lies further inland and is defined by the fertile valleys that are irrigated by wow. Belgium's many waterways. More rugged than the first two regions, the Ardennes is rocky and thickly forested. It was also the location of some of the most significant battles of the 20th century. More on that in a bit. And finally, Belgium is the second most densely populated country in the world when it comes to castles after wow. Wales, what? with the small country what? boasting 3,000. Oh Castles. I love castles. I don't know a lot about castles, okay? It's just like a... Uh, dream. Yeah, dream. You know, yeah. like when I see one, I'm just like, oh my gosh, I would love to live in a castle. In fact, the castle doesn't have to be very big. It just has to look like a castle. Do you know what I mean? It could be very... Travis just wants to play castle. <laughs> Do you want to play castle? <laughs> <laughs> look at this drive in there. I would have, the cars I would have like renaissance type costumes right for here. people to wear when they come over and have like dinner parties and stuff. I think that would be a good time. Yeah. Yeah. What Did you see that drive? Is this the driveway, driveway thing? Spot. Yeah, that's dope. It's oh like the cars gosh. are tucked in there. I love this. That is cool. Yeah. Drawbridges are really cool. All I can think about is all of the like different... Like, I love all the architectures, but, like, all I think about if I'm, like, oh, I would live there is, like, all the different um, places in the roof that there could be a leak. Uh, like, I'm, like, traumatized. <laughs> I'm traumatized That's by true. roof yeah. leaks. <laughs> so... Of them. A few of the many Belgian castles oh, to check out include Clavenstein, which in Dutch oh means the gosh. castle of counts. It <gasps> dates all the way back to the reign of Arnulf I in the 10th century AD. Oidonk Castle in oh. East Flanders dates back to at least 1230 and was destroyed oh, several times in its history. And Gaspeek, which is used as a national museum. It was originally built in 1240 to defend the Duchy could, of Brabant uh, against the county of Flanders. Let's castle check out what comes from Belgium. Like, what? you could just go to Belgium on a castle tour oh and just, gosh. like, that's it. That's all you do there is go on a tour of all the castles, just see them all, wow. just, like, touch them. Mm. Look, look. Stay wow. calm. Oh. Where to start? Two of the most famous cartoons are originally from Belgium. Created in 1958 by Belgian artist Pierre Colleford, the Smurfs are little blue creatures, almost all males, that live in mushroom homes in the forest. There are more than 100 Smurf characters, and their names are based on adjectives that emphasize their characteristics, such as Grouchy Smurf, who's never in a good mood. How there are so many of them despite only having three girls ever recorded in the village is a question from my childhood I still don't have an answer to. <laughs> Smurfs! The Adventures of Tintin was created by Belgian cartoonist Georges Remy. The series first appeared in French in January of wow. 1929 and is centered around its hero Tintin, a courageous young Belgian reporter and adventurer wow. aided by his faithful dog Snowy and other allies. 
Tintin was one of the most popular European comics of the 20th century. From the drawn to the written, the Communist Manifesto was written by Prussians Karl Marx and Frederick Engels while living in Brussels. Later recognized as one of the world's most influential political documents, the Manifesto presents an analytical approach to the class yeah. struggle between the rich and the poor and the conflicts of capitalism regarding how goods are produced. It yeah. formed the basis of the modern communist movement as we know it, arguing that capitalism would inevitably self-destruct to be replaced by socialism and ultimately communism. Currently, there are five countries in the world that are communist. It's looking like Marx was wrong about that whole capitalism will self-destruct theory. Bazinga. Speaking of Bazinga, <laughs> Belgian physicist and priest Georges Lamet proposed the Big Bang Theory on the origin of the universe. That was a smooth transition <laughs> right there. <laughs> that was good. First calling it the hypothesis of the primeval atom, and later calling it the beginning of the world. In simple terms, the Big Bang is how astronomers wow. explain the way the universe began. It is the idea that the universe began as just a single point, then expanded and stretched to grow as large as it is right now. And it is still stretching to this day, kinda like stretchy pants on Thanksgiving. For the music lovers out there, the saxophone was invented by Belgian inventor and musician Adolphe Sax that, around 1840. The saxophone, or the sax, genius. is a type of single reed woodwind instrument with a conical body, usually made of brass and sounds like this. Some of the greatest saxophonists of all time include John Coltrane, Charlie Parker, and Sonny Rollins. While spa therapies have been used dating back to ancient Greek and Roman times, the word spa comes from the name of the town Spa Belgium, whose name is known from Roman times, when the location was called Aque Spadane. As the site of cold springs with alleged healing properties, Spa has been frequented as a watering place since the 14th century and is still one of the most visited places in Belgium. In 2021, the we'll town became part there. of the transnational UNESCO World Heritage Site under the name Great Spa Towns of Europe. The world's first fully synthetic plastic was Bacolite, invented in 1907 by Belgian inventor Leo Bacolin, who coined the term plastics. Dozens of different types of plastics are produced today, and it's doubtful Bakalan fully understood all the positives and negatives of plastics. On one hand, plastic is durable, cheap to make, water resistant, and lightweight. On the other hand, plastics have proven to be a huge environmental problem and a danger to many types of animals. Don't believe me? Google the Great Pacific Garbage Patch in the Pacific Ocean. Yikes. So many other things are Belgian ideas and inventions, including the body mass index, which contributes to my depression, the Mercator map projection, <laughs> though its creation is disputed, and the medication Imodium. The Belgians are also credited with having the first stock exchange in 1531 nice. in the city wow. of Antwerp. According to Avestapedia, wow. brokers and money lenders would meet there to so deal with businesses, government, awesome. and even individual debt Beautiful. issues. What else has happened in Belgium? We will find out next as we explore Belgian history. I wish I was above the center of attention, but I'm not. The concept of Belgium is not very old, with the tiny nation gaining its independence in 1830. But before that, the area that is today known as Belgium was taken over by many larger powers and broken into smaller states many times, dating all the way back to the ancient times. Now I'm not gonna lie, I wrote out the history of Belgium before independence and it got a bit lengthy. Let's just say historically present day Belgium has been coveted by its neighbors for a long time. Here's the shortened version. In order, ancient Belgium was inhabited by the Celtics and became a part of Gaul. Gaul was conquered by the Romans. After Rome's fall, Belgium was conquered by the Franks under the Merovingian dynasty who eventually gave way to the Frankish Carolingian dynasty. Still with me? Around this time, the Vikings raided the heck out of present-day Belgium, but they didn't necessarily capture it. The lowlands were divided and reunified several times before being divided into France and the Holy Roman Empire. Of course, parts of it were a member of each. Eventually, the land that is Belgium again broke into independent-ish provinces, some of which whose names I won't even try to say. <laughs> Not doing it. In 1214, France defeated the county of Flanders in the Battle of Bovines, placing Flanders under French control for the next century until the beginnings of the Hundred Years' War with England. Of course, you can probably see how the Low Countries were caught in the middle of that fight. By 1433, most of the Belgian territory became part of Burgundy under Philip the Good. But when his granddaughter married Maximilian I, the Low Countries became Habsburg territory. It was around this time that Belgian cities took turns at being major European centers for commerce, industry, and art. Speaking of art, pre-independence Belgium was quite active in the Renaissance, represented by the Flemish Primitives, a group of painters such as Jan van Eyck and Roger van der Weyden. 
The Pragmatic Sanction of 1549 established the so-called 17 provinces, again making the area including modern Belgium a bunch of little independent states. The northern part of the 17 provinces eventually formed the Dutch Republic and became Protestant while those in present-day Belgium remained Catholic. This led Spain to attack the Dutch and eventually present-day Belgium. The Dutch were able to free themselves, the Belgians were not, placing it under Spanish control until 1713. Have we made it to modern-day Belgium yet? Wow. Nope. Most of the Spanish War of Succession from 1701 to 1714 was fought in present-day Belgium, putting Belgium under the control of the Austrian Habsburgs who formed the Austrian Netherlands. I could the area was in invaded that, like, and annexed by the like French in 1795, probably. who held serve in Belgium until the 1814 defeat of Napoleon. Napoleon came back and was finally defeated at the Battle of Waterloo in present-day Belgium while on his way to capture Brussels. This led the Congress of Vienna to again come combined Belgium with the Dutch, creating the United Kingdom of the Netherlands, from whom the Belgians gained independence from in 1830. With that out of the way, let's talk about Belgian history, shall we? The Belgian Revolution broke out in August of 1830 when crowds stirred by a performance of Aubers La Moete de Portici at the Brussels Opera House of La Monet spilled out into the streets singing patriotic songs. Violent street fighting soon broke out and anarchy reigned in Brussels. Who knew opera could be wow. so destructive? Wow. Revolution broke out because the Belgians felt underrepresented in the Netherlands elected lower assembly. They also were not fans of the unpopular Prince of Orange who would one day become William II. The rest of the European powers did not love the idea of a Belgian-Dutch breakup, I mean they did put them together for a reason. But despite their reservations, in November of 1830, the powers met in England for the London Conference of 1830, also known as the Belgian Conference, and an armistice was ordered on November 4th. The Constitution of Belgium was accepted on July 21st, 1831, and Leopold I of Saxe-Coburg was named king. One interesting guy, we will discuss both Leopold I and II in the people section of the video. Around the time Belgium was becoming its own country, the Belgians became the second country to industrialize after Great Britain, setting the pace for the rest of the continental Europe. Starting in the mid-1820s, the availability of cheap coal was a main factor in attracting entrepreneurs and eventually propelling Belgium into becoming an economic giant. Belgium was officially neutral in both world wars, but the Germans invaded both times anyway, first running through Belgium to march on Paris, and again in the Second World War in which King Leopold III surrendered after 18 days without consulting with the government. His questionable leadership forced him to abdicate in 1951. In keeping with the tradition of major battles happening on Belgian soil, a large chunk of the Battle of the Bulge was fought in Belgium. The last major German offensive, it was launched through the densely forested Ardennes region between Belgium and Luxembourg. The offensive was unsuccessful and Germany was on the run for the remainder of the war. Belgium has a rich history in no small part due to their amazing people. About 98% of Belgians live in urban areas and it is the 22nd most densely populated country in the world. Wow. As mentioned before, the bulk of the country speaks either Dutch or French depending on which region they're from. One thing Belgians do not excel at is marriage. With a seven so I don't know if they're going to get to this, but if everyone is so condensed, uh, does majority rely on public transportation? Or does everyone still pretty much like have their own vehicles and things like that, I wonder? Oh, yeah. 70% divorce rate, the country has the highest rate in Western Europe and one of the highest divorce rates in the world. I wonder how you say prenup in French or Dutch. It is believed that as much as one third of the Belgian population is either from other countries or children of people from other countries, with the immigrants coming from all over wow. Europe and beyond, with large numbers of immigrants coming from Morocco, Turkey, and the Democratic Republic of Congo. One example would be Belgian footballer Romelo Lukaku, who was the national team's all-time top scorer and the son of parents from the Democratic Republic of Congo. Famous Belgians include legendary actress Audrey Hepburn, who was born in Brussels. Fashion designer Liz Claiborne was also born in Brussels, the daughter of American parents. She lived the first 10 years of her life in Belgium, moving back to the United States at the beginning of World War II. And Belgian Robert Calio was the co-inventor of the World Wide Web while working at CERN. 
While not often associated with Belgium, middle-aged leaders Charlemagne, Charles V, and Charles Martel were all born in present-day Belgium. Mm. Leopold I was Belgium's first king despite not being Belgian. Check his story out. Born in Germany, Dang. he was given the rank of Major General of the Russian Imperial Army at the age of 12, despite not being Russian. Wow. At the age of 16, he was a part of Napoleon's Imperial Court. Was he French? Wow. Nope. Turning down a position under Napoleon, he then remembered he was a general in the Russian Imperial Army and fought Napoleon's armies in battle. Despite huh. not being British, he did become a British citizen at the age of 26 and married Damn. Princess Charlotte, second in line to the British throne. Charlotte died a year into the marriage after miscarrying. After all this, Leopold was offered the Greek crown despite not being Greek which he passed Jeez. on before ascending the Belgian throne on July 21st, 1831, today the Belgian <laughs> national holiday. He may have been the most interesting man in the world yeah. and he was given the Belgian well crown despite not being Belgian. Then again, he wasn't Greek either, or Russian, or French. The second son of Leopold was Leopold II, whose record was a bit more checkered. On the positive side, he was referred favorite. to as the Builder ah. King in Belgium due to all the buildings, urban projects, and public works he commissioned. On the negative side was his brutal treatment of those living in what is today the Democratic Republic of Congo under his watch. At the Berlin Conference of 1884 and 85, Leopold was given the Congo Free State to improve the lives of the people living there. He instead worked to improve his own life. Leopold extracted a fortune from the Congo, initially by the collection of ivory, then rubber in the 1890s, using forced labor. Under his leadership, failure of the Congolese to meet collection quotas was punishable by death. Many Congolese inhabitants, including children, were mutilated, killed, or died from disease and famine. The estimated death toll of Leopold II's reign of terror is estimated between 1 and 15 million people, which often places him on various worst people in history lists. Wow. Sorry, Belgium, I have to report the good and the bad. Fresh chip off the block. Watch my head spin. I got awkward thoughts and a neck twitch. I fall off the, the Belgian neck. national dish is moule frit, mussels cooked or steamed with onions and celery served with Belgian fries. Speaking of fries, <laughs> while many in the Western world, specifically the United States and Canada, call them French fries, there is good reason to believe that fries were actually invented in Belgium, oh, though the really? countries continue to argue over who made them first. <laughs> Common Belgian lore claims that the original fry was born in Namur in the Wallonian region of Belgium, where the locals were fond of fried fish. When the river Meuse froze over one cold winter in 1680, people fried potatoes instead of the small fish they were accustomed to and the French or Belgian fry was created. American soldiers stationed in the region. Potatoes are really wonderful. They are wonderful. You know, I just learned today from watching a random show that in, um, in another country where there's typhoons in, 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 in Japan, mm -hmm. They de oh, they depended on potatoes because they grow under the ground and the typhoon can't ruin them. Wow. Yeah. So potatoes are amazing. Just saying. Potatoes. potatoes are also amazing. During World War I, allegedly dubbed the potatoes French fries and the common name was born. Sounds like a good debate in the comments. Where do you think french fries came from? While waffles have been around since ancient Greece, no one takes their waffles more seriously than the Belgians. A dish made from leavened batter or dough that oh, is cooked between two patterned plates, there are 12 variations of waffles in That's Belgium like really alone. Thick Belgian waffles tend to have lighter batter. batter, larger squares, and deeper pockets than the American waffles, if you are in fact watching this from the United States. The Belgians are also renowned for their beer, which rates as among the best in the world. In 2011, there were over 1,100 different varieties of beer being produced in the country at wow. 304 different breweries. The wow, brewing tradition in Belgium can be traced back the to the early Middle Ages and six Trappist monasteries still produce beer, which was initially used to fund their upkeep. Most beers are bought and served in bottles, and almost every style of beer has its own particular uniquely shaped glass or other drinking vessel wow. which can really clutter up Belgian cabinets. Using the correct glass is considered to improve its flavor. Having previously worked at a craft beer bar, I could go on about Belgian styles and breweries forever, but let's move on and answer one of the main questions from the beginning of the video. In the 1970s, students consumed beer with their school lunches. You're probably getting one heck of a visual right now, aren't you? But before we rush to judge, hear their reasoning out. Keep in mind the beer was a table beer and not strong at all. The most popular table beer was Piedboef, and it had a 1.1% ABV alcohol 
in it and there was a lot of sugar added to make it as sweet as Coca-Cola, making it about four times weaker than your typical Coors Light. Mistakenly seen as healthy at the time, once the Belgian government realized it was not, big shock there, they shut it down. Another Belgian delicacy wow. that has to be mentioned is Belgian chocolate. It's like cigarettes. Oops. Remember when they used to say cigarettes were healthier? Oh, oh my gosh. Lots of things. Chocolate. Chocolate production in the country dates back to 1635, mm. and today the country has more than 2,000 chocolate shops. Brussels Airport is the world's largest sales outlet for chocolate, selling over 800 wow. tons a year. Have you ever wondered if we really needed a government? Belgium has proven that some places can go months, even years, without a national government. Following the Belgian general election held on the 13th of June in 2010, they did not have a required majority in its 150-seat chamber of representatives, leaving it without an active government for 589 days. A majority is difficult to come by in the Belgian legislature because there are 11 parties elected to the chamber and creating coalitions that represent a majority can prove to be difficult. As crazy as that that sounds, the Belgians recently broke their own record, agreeing to a government in October of 2020 after 652 days without one. Wow. When they do have a functioning national government, Belgium is a federal parliamentary democracy under a constitutional monarchy. Its monarch is King Philippe, who has reigned since 2013. The current prime minister is Alexander de Croo, at least until the government dissolves again. Its capital is Brussels, which makes sense because Brussels is also known as the capital of Europe, a name it gets for being the seat of the European Union. While the EU has no official capital, Brussels hosts the official seats of the European Commission, Council of the European Union, and the European Council, as well as a seat of the European Parliament. The city is also a political and administrative center of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, also known as NATO. Many other international organizations such as the World Customs Organization and Eurocontrol as well as international corporations have their main institutions in the city. In terms of the economy, we previously hided Belgian chocolate. They are in fact the number two exporter of chocolate in the world. Wow. Antwerp is known as the diamond capital of the world and as much as 85% of the world's rough diamonds pass through the city's diamond district each year. The city wow. has four diamond... I'll tell you what, for such a small... Place. Yeah landmass maybe that's the right way to put it so much comes from belgium yeah it's big amazing. personality you know wow, there you go <laughs> exchanges names i get crucified for trying to pronounce antwerp's history in the diamond trade dates all the way back to as early as the 16th century another interesting fact about the belgium economy is that 80 percent of all billiard balls are made in belgium with that in mind let's cue up the section that focuses on huh? people of belgian descent living in other countries The list of foreigners with Belgian ancestry is long and impressive. There are people of Belgian ancestry living around the globe with most residing in the United States, Canada, France, and the Netherlands. Explorer Peter Minuit founded the Swedish colony of New Sweden on the Delaware Peninsula in 1638. He is also credited with orchestrating the purchase of Manhattan Island for the Dutch East India Company from the Lenape Indians. Manhattan later became the site of the Dutch city of New Amsterdam and the borough of Manhattan of modern-day New York City. A common account states that Minuit purchased Manhattan for $24 worth of trinkets. George Washington Goethals was born in Brooklyn, New York to Flemish immigrants from Stikeen, Belgium. He was a United States Army general and civil engineer best known for his administration and supervision of the construction and the opening of the Panama Canal. Wow. American industrialist Henry Ford, whose mother was the child of Belgian immigrants, was the founder of the Ford Motor Company and chief developer of the assembly line technique of mass production. By creating the first automobile that middle class Americans could afford, he converted the automobile from an expensive luxury into an accessible thing that profoundly impacted the landscape of the 20th century. Puppeteer Frank Oz, the son of a Belgian mother, performed the Muppet characters of Miss Piggy, Fozzie Bear, Animal, and Sam Eagle in The Muppet Show, and Cookie Monster, I Bert, like and guy. Grover in Sesame Street. Hmm, <laughs> impressive career he has. Other people with Belgian lineage include missionary and explorer Louis Hennepin, actors Robert Duvall and Georgia Fox, and athletes Jacob deGrom, Tim Tebow, and Kiki Vandewich. Tebow! Wake up, get up, stretch my legs. With its picturesque canals, Bruges is often referred to as the Venice of the North. Once directly connected with the sea like Venice itself, gradual silting since around 1050 has caused the city to lose its direct access to the sea, but remains one of the most beautiful cities in Europe. 
Bruges has a significant economic importance thanks to its port and was once one of the world's chief commercial cities. Today, Bruges remains a major tourism destination within Belgium and is well known as the seat of the College of Europe, a university institute for European studies. The capital and largest city of West Flanders, the historic city center was added to UNESCO's World Heritage List in 2000. One of the best known symbols of Brussels in Belgium is Mannequin Peace, a bronze fountain sculpture in central Brussels depicting a naked little boy urinating into the fountain's basin. The name of this tiny statue simply translates to peeing boy. As time went on, legends began to grow about Mannequin Peace. The most popular story states how the little peeing boy saved the capital. One day, the enemy seemingly retreated, but they had really put tons of gunpowder under the city. A little boy saw the burning fuse and quickly peed on it. Did it really happen? Sometimes it's best to leave tales to the imagination. <laughs> the world we live in like is a complex network him. of people and places <laughs> with wonderful histories and cultures. The tiny country of Belgium has a massive footprint on a global community that thrives when ideas are exchanged. What was the most interesting thing you learned about Belgium? Be sure to share in the comments. Until next time, thank you for taking time out of your day to explore our global community. That was an awesome video. That was awesome. That was such a good idea. That was well done. Hopefully this starts on a little trend here. I love that. Yeah. How cool to learn so much about Belgium. Oh, that's and all their awesome. castles. Yeah. Wow. Dang, and architecture and just history. That was just, that was really cool. Yeah. Um, were you guys a fan of Tim Tebow or not? Oh. That's a good question. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, that was so cool. Thank you for that, Menno. Thank you guys for hanging out. If you enjoyed hanging out, like and subscribe. If you want to request your own personal reaction video, that link right there can be found in the description box, which is below this video. Uh, if you click on that link, you can request maybe something from your country, maybe uh, a music video, a compilation video, a uh, comedy skit, anything like that. Uh, hit like and subscribe. Stay tuned. Stay positive. We love you guys, and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye. I just want to my bed.